What's going on guys? Today we're talking about spray paint. Allie and Jay here from Master Brush Reno. Like Allie says, we're talking about your spray projects today. So we got some tips and tricks to share with you. So we picked a really nice day today. It's over 10 degrees, not too windy. Perfect opportunity for us to spray our pieces of wood here. So guys, uh, we've chosen to elevate our project. It's more ergonomic, it's easier to spray that way. Uh, you're not bent over, so if you can get your project elevated on a workbench and certainly protect the area with a drop sheet from overspray and get messy. That's right. So before we begin today's spray project, we got a few important points to cover. And that's starting with the elevation. As you can see, we've got these little handy tools here they're called painters pyramids and they're under our work surface and that enables us to do two things one to spray all four corners of our surface simultaneously with the top and or bottom and another important factor is we can flip our surface back and forth speeding up the dry time and that's because these painters pyramids they have a very small surface area which is a siliconized tip so that doesn't interrupt the dry time or cure when you're working on these spray paint or just regular paint projects onto the primer guys we're going to be priming the entire surface here it is a raw wood material so we always recommend using a primer on these types of materials as well as laminate and that's going to ensure the maximum durability bond and adhesion on our surface. Speaking of bond and adhesion, use some 150 to 120 grit sandpaper. Go over the entire surface, just lightly give it a scuff sand and remove any dust before spraying it with the primer. That is again going to increase bond and maximum adhesion and durability, guys. All right, first things first, shake the can properly at least a minute. So what we have here is a comfort grip by Rust-Oleum. We'll link it in the product description below. And what it does is, when you see the arrow on top of the can, it corresponds with the nozzle. And we got two adjustable springs right here, and that opens up the mechanism. So you want to line it up so that the center of the arrow falls exactly in between right here. And when you spray it, it's going to come right out the center. So just make sure that's properly adjusted and Perfect. you're ready to go. So the way it works is you got a handle, you hold it like this, and the trigger, which is this red portion here, actually controls the nozzle. So what you want to do is be 8 to 12 inches away of your shooting subject. And why I love this product so much is because it has so much control. So on a surface like this, we have the edges to do as well. What we want to do is start with the edges and then do the top at the end. And the reason for that is so that you don't have any overspray from the edge going on top. So an important safety tip, there's a couple different types of masks. We like to use this one, it's more professional grade. And the reason we're outside today is so that there's better ventilation, but in some cases you're not outdoors. It's always important to wear a mask, keep your lungs safe. So another tip guys is to make sure you have a consistent pace back and forth 8 to 12 inches away from your shooting subject and when you're going you don't want to be too quick or too slow because then it's not going to come out the way you want it. All right guys, we're done with our primer. Within one hour, you wanna put your top coat. In this case, we're using a semi-gloss in black. This is our top coat. So we're gonna, again, shake it for at least a minute and continue shaking it during coats. And we're gonna put two coats on top of the primer and we're gonna do that within one hour. It should be dry to the touch within another hour after that and it'll be fully dry in 24 hours. 